um, 6.34 p.m. Uh, it's April 25th, 2023. Uh, I'd like to open the public meeting this evening uh, for the Water and Sewer Commission Supplemental Sewer Assessment. Um, and we'll begin by um, Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Thanks. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I'm going to read the notice of the public hearing. Um, this notice was, uh, this meeting's been duly noticed on, the, on our town website, uh, filed with the town clerk uh, on April 10 of 2023. And it was also noticed in the day newspaper, uh, 41423. So notice is hereby given that the Eastland Water and Sewer Commission, the duly designated Water Pollution Control Authority of the Town of East Lyme, is holding a public hearing this evening, Tuesday, April 25th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, here in Town Hall uh, in Nyanta, Connecticut, regarding the proposed supplemental sewer assessments for the properties listed uh, as Schedule A in the notice. Uh, the purpose of the hearing is to receive and consider comments regarding proposed assessments to be levied on, on the properties uh, outlined or uh, listed rather in Schedule A, benefited by the sanitary sewer system in East Lyme. Uh, and that was signed by uh, Kevin Seary, uh, first selectman. Um, and I am the deputy first selectman and I am sitting in for Mr. Seary this evening. Okay, so. Um, Let's see, we'll, um, if there are any members of the public who would like to address the commission um, this evening. Yeah, I was just gonna say we might as well go, go in order. I know that there are three that are looking to speak tonight. Um, the first being 159 Boston Post Road. Okay, and that's first on Schedule A, everyone? Okay. And um, yes, please uh, state your name and address uh, for the record. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Patrit. Last name is Marku. I'm uh, one of the owners of the 159 Boston Post Road in East Line. And I have a few questions because uh, I'm not understanding me and my business partner how they kept, came up with this number. They say it's eight unions. What is unions? I, I don't know. Uh, previous before, which is, I have few business in town, and I, I, I love this town, and I appreciate it. They gave me to to take the old building down. Then I was uh, mixed use uh, before. And uh, uh, this is for the bathroom or for we made a brand new building because I don't understand why we have to get hit with $40,000. And I appreciate if somebody could explain it to me before. My business partner, he wants, he's born here, he wants to hire a lawyer, but I said, I wanna go to understand because I, I love this town and I wanna make sure if I owe the money, and, I don't mind to pay it, but if it's been used before and the same uses, why I have to come up with this number? I I paid the connection fee. For why is this? Because I made the brand new building. I'm going to pay the taxes for the real estate. I improve, looks beautiful. I just want to know what where is this money is going and how they come up with eight units which i don't have a eight units and if it's i just want to know somebody can explain he tried to explain to me but i'm sorry i've been a few years in this country but, but maybe i don't understand everything and i'm sorry to take the time i i understand everybody's busy appreciate if you guys do the time but Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. It, it, this public hearing portion, uh, 
in, in the public hearing, we don't really have a back and forth with you on the topic, okay. but you, you can state your, um, your issues and well, your my, so. my issues, they say, is eight, eight units, and I don't have eight units. And if some understanding and somebody told me something that I, I'm still not understanding is uh, how they come up with this number. Uh, they gave me the credit that I was before there because I was mixed use. I was second floor and a first floor. First floor and I was salon. And they came with $40,000 and I said, I thought I'm gonna pay $5,000 maybe, but I paid the town 3,500 and now I'm with $40,000. I just wanna know, this is, this is why I'm here and, and I can't swallow this. I, I put a lot in that place, I thought, and, I'm still paying the, the real estates, paying the town. I just, this is why I'm here. Oh, well, thanks. I, um, I, I don't know what else, you know, I mean, I, okay. this is what I have. All right, thank you. Just be sure that um, our recording secretary um, has your name and uh, properly spelled as you finish your comments. Uh, okay. Okay. okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, and, so um, we'll continue uh, with um, comments from, from individuals here, but I think what, I, what we may wish to do, uh, if, if, if we're all in agreement, at the, at the close of those comments, um, then you can go over some basic process. So, yeah. so that may clear up some, some issues. Yeah, okay. these all have, have They're all very similar yeah. right, in nature, so. Sure. Okay. Um, who's next? Um, next uh, is uh, uh, Mr. Adamo with 20 Industrial Park Road. Okay. And that's third on Schedule A for everyone, okay? No, you can have it if you want. Okay. I'm just, I'm just so uh, unfortunately, yeah, I, I did killed enough trees in this. Uh, okay. We just want to make this sure that we get a copy into the record. Right. So okay. We'll, we'll pass that on to um, to the recording secretary for now. Thanks. Are you going to reference to any of these? I, I am, sir. Sure. All right. So we'll keep it here. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to address the situation. My name is Vito Adabo. I live at 54 Columbus Avenue in, uh, here in Niantic, and we've been residents here for uh, over 20 years. To bring a few items for your reference, on January 13th of 2015, we purchased the 1.17 acres of 28 Industrial Park in Niantic, Connecticut, and Burton Barrett Olson. They had subdivided their three acres of 26 Industrial Park. Besides the proximity to our home, the fact that it already had a sewer lateral in place and access to water and natural gas made it attractive. We paid $120,000 for a lot. Town maps show the sewer lateral was in place from at least 1990. It's been there 33 years now. June 25th, 2015, I obtained the building permit, and that you'll see that in there, um, to start construction. Please note on the town building permit, the bottom half right side is a block that Private septic systems must submit a copy of all plans to Ledge Light Health District. I then obtained a permit for a sewer connection and paid the fee of $200 on November 5th, 2015. It's important to note on this form, there's no mention of additional assessments that could be applied. One could reasonably assume that all connection fees have been paid. No one in the office discussed the potential for additional assessments. I'll dispense with all the construction details, but we received a final inspection certificate of occupancy uh, 26 May of 2016. Uh, that's in there as well. Right about that time, I was notified of an over $40,000 sewer assessment for connecting to the lateral. I went to the office to discuss this matter. I was told the assessment had been paid for the land, so I'd only need to pay the additional assessment for the new building. This would be recalculated and I would be informed. I received no further communication on this subject. On April 12th of 2023, I received this letter, also in there, 
for a proposed assessment of $52,506.13, seven years later. The way it was explained to me, when the sewer line was installed back in 1990, rather than raise taxes for everyone in East Lyme, only those connected to this new line and who especially benefited would be assessed. In the East Lyme Water and Sewer Commission, August 23, 2016 meeting minutes, that are attached at the back. There's an explanation of the assessments and how the $6,001,930.83 cost for commercial property was apportioned. It also states this sewer line was completely paid off in 2016. Part of this formula is based on frontage length, as the sewer line had to be dug and placed in a road with proper elevation to facilitate flow to the pumping station. It's reasonable to base the charge for length of this service line. The size of the lot also influ influences the charge. The larger the property, the greater potential for a larger uh, building with commensurate greater discharge. Although the formula states accessible property, however, there's no allowance for properties that have wetlands, which are essentially unusable. Also, I was told that regardless of the number of units, the minimum charge is for five units. My building is considered one unit. Again, I agree with the rationale for the formula. Generating the $6 million to fund the project was necessary. The sewer line is now paid off. And I connected to a lateral that has existed on my property since at least 1990. It was previously paid off, assessed, and then released by the town of East Lyme. I was told that when a property is subdivided, it is assessed again. So although the lot was already assessed for frontage land and value, it's assessed again. Based on the formulation to a portion of roughly $6 million, the assessment would have been $41,014.10 in 2016. We bought the lot in 2015, built a commercial building that initially housed three businesses. Two of my tenants had each started their businesses in a single bay. Adam McCaffrey started with just two guys in a truck. He maintains many yards, plows driveways in the winter here in East Lyme. He has steadily grown his business, now has at least eight trucks, equipment, and uh, many employees. He definitely helps to keep our town beautiful. Victor Abru, my other tenant, also started his business in my shop. He also grew his business, adding employees and machinery to the extent that he needed to move down to the old New England Valley building just up the street. Adam now occupies half of my building. Victor and Adam, through drive and perseverance, have developed their respective businesses, greatly benefit our community. Because of the added value of the building and all the commercial assets of the businesses located here, additional taxes of real estate and personal property have been generated and are being paid a benefit to East Lyme. On the list of proposed sewer assessments, my property is second highest. I've noticed that each of the condos is being assessed $5,879.17. The average household in the U.S. uses 300 gallons of water per day. I've attached a printout of the water I've used at 28 Industrial Park Road. For the last seven years, we're averaging 900 gallons per month. So for nearly 10 times the assessment charge, we use one-tenth the water. Who is especially benefited? It should also be noted that water bills include a sewer charge. Our drain, pun intended, on our sewer system is negligible. If I'd been informed of the enormity of the assessment that I could potentially pay when pulling the permits, I could have easily installed a septic system for around $10,000 while the site was under construction. The minutes of the East Lyme Water and Sewer Commission public hearing on August 23, 2016, when we probably should have been brought to before this board, indicated an interest rate of 3.5% used at that time. I'm told it's now five and a quarter. These are inflationary adjustments. When looking at the over $10,000 increase in assessment and increase in interest rates, this amounts to an increase of over $26,000 over a 20-year payment schedule. I view these as punitive. Why are we being punished for what is best a clerical uh, error by the town office? The resolution and basis for the assessments uses the term especially benefited. With an installation cost now between ten to fifteen thousand for a septic system, and a current assessment of fifty-two thousand dollars, after the property had already been assessed and released, I would recategorize that, recategorize that to especially penalized or perhaps excessively taxed. For my research of town records, the Olsons had two laterals installed on the property. Uh, you can see them here, and they're also on the uh, the larger displays there. Um, August 10, 1992, they were assessed $37,241.30, also in there, for the entire property. That was lot three, all of that. 
Please note, and I will read directly from the town records when this assessment was paid off. The undersigned treasurer of the town of East Lyme in the county of New London, state of Connecticut, hereby releases and discharges in full the sewer assessment benefit charge in favor of the said town of East Lyme upon certain real estate situated in said county of New London and town of East Lyme, which caveat is recorded in the name of Olson Bertel G. It then references the volume and page, which is the assessment, which then references the volume and page of their deed, when the, uh, which was when uh, they purchased the entire lot. My property was released. There was no outstanding liens or assessments on my property when I purchased it with a sewer lateral in place. To reiterate, seven years have passed without notification. Perhaps the reason there was no communication was because they were uncertain or didn't believe an assessment was warranted. Regardless of why this happened, it's not of our doing. During those seven years, we financed the building while establishing rents and budgets. If we had opted for the septic system, it would have been included in the financing of the property. Based on the town of East Lyme release, I don't believe I own anything. This is simply a matter of what's right. I hope there's a way to arrive at a reasonable solution, uh, a reasonable resolution. Thank you for time and consideration. Happy to answer any questions. So, again, we won't have back and forth. I know, we won't have back and there. forth. You know, I could get into Chapter 103-7-249 legal uh, assessments, but this is paid off. According to general statute, there should be no assessment on sewer lines that have already been paid off. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks for your All right. Hi, Hello. So I'm Carol York, 94 Old Black Point Road. Um, I've been in town 17 years at 92 Old Black Point Road and then did a subdivision when I sold my home and built a house out back on 94. Um, so a couple of things. Um, first of all, I have no street frontage. I'm on a right of way, so there's zero street frontage, which to me would also mean there was zero infrastructure cost in order to serve me. So I have paid the application fee, I'll be paying the sewer use fee. Um, there was no lateral. So in construction of the house, I paid $24,800 in order for the contractor to get into the sewer main to create the lateral that was never there. So I'm already out $24,800. Um, again, had no inclination when I did the application you know, for the building permit and whatnot that there would ever be this kind of an assessment coming at me. So at least for me, it's only a year old rather than seven years old. But still, there was no, nothing on the forms, nothing to give any inkling that, that this is something that I would be, um, think about having to shell out you know, down the road. So I just asked for some relief because my contractor had to do all the work that um, <clears throat> might have been provided had a lateral been there. And again, I have no frontage on the street. Um, and I know there's no back and forth, so I can't answer any questions. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else for any other public comment? Okay. Well, um, Qu question? Um, come back up to the microphone, Mr. Dabo. Thank you. So we can hear you. Vito Dabo again. Um, is there a provision to discuss? alternative fines or whatever we want to call okay. this assessments so um what I'm, uh, what i w would like to do now is i'd like to have mr north speak to the process that that is in place okay and, and then we'll that may answer some of your questions and then and we have counsel here as well but that let's let's take that step at this time okay okay thank you Good evening. Uh, my name is Ben North. I'm the uh, Municipal Utilities Engineer for the Town of East Lyme. Um, so, yes, I wanted to speak to each of these conditions um, and, and 
some similarities, at least with the first two. The the third one is is a, a res residential assessment, so it's a little bit different. Um, but in both of these two um, initial assessments, the the first one was a an improvement of a of land that existed and already paid an assessment. The original assessment that they paid was the uh, seventy eight um, thirty eight eighty nine, which is a residential assessment. So when the developer went and uh, modified the land. Um, added apartments and commercial space uh, that triggered a commercial assessment, uh, uh, supplemental assessment, uh, much like we've we've seen uh, many times before. Um, the thirty-five hundred dollars was for the water tapping fee, um, and is not in relation to the the sewer assessment. Um, so those that that's pretty much what um, I think covers that one. Um, the, the eight versus five units uh, discrepancy goes into the, the original resolution language, which counts a vacant commercial property as three units and then um, an additional uh, unit per dwelling. Uh, there are five apartment uh, dwellings, so that brings our count to eight. Uh, so that, that would uh, answer that question. Um, and uh, 20 Industrial Park Road was a uh, subdivision off of 26 um, Industrial Park Road, as uh, Mr. Adabo had pointed out. Um, our resolution language also states that even though a, a property had been previously assessed, once it becomes subdivided, much in the same way that uh, Miss York's situation, it, it is triggering a new assessment. Um, this is, uh, unfortunately for Mr. Adabo, in an industrial zone where even a, um, a vacant piece of industrial land is, is uh, is is counted as five uh, industrial units, um, plus you know the same type of situation where you know every dwelling is then counted as an additional unit, um, and then finally for um, Miss York, 94 Old Black Point Road, um, something that the commission's seen several times over. Uh, whenever a property is subdivided and a new home is put up, a uh, a sub, uh, sewer assessment is levied on that residential property. Um, it does not um, take into account the frontage of the property. It is a flat rate assessment, as mentioned in the resolution. And the uh, uh, the commission has entertained uh, relief on portions of laterals before. I think we've gone as high as a thousand dollars in the past, but. Um, uh, the resolution is also very clear on this, that uh, when, a, when a lot is subdivided and a lateral needs to be uh, constructed for the purpose of that subdivision, there is no credit that is awarded based on the resolution language. That's all I have. Yes, go ahead. You can come back off if you'd like. We'll I'm so sorry. No, I'm that's okay. Um, it's, I just it's hear fine. from Ben. Yeah, All right. if you have a final Again, my, uh, my name is Patrice Mark. I'm 159 Boston Post Road. Uh, as far as I know, the building before I was mixed use, I was a salon in the first floor, apartment in the top. It's been over 100 years function. Uh, I bought and, and we built it. And it's nothing changed besides it's been brand new. It's, it's uh, commercial on the first floor and, and uh, apartment in the second floor. And I just don't understand how this, and I owe this money and I didn't know that. If I knew it, I was all sand, I just put a septic system. That was cheaper for me. Because all sand, people came and buy it, that was all sand. I never see a sand in my life like this, just a river. If I knew it, I just put the uh, septic system there. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? You can just connect. Uh, just All right. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. You know how much I paid just to connect it to, to do the street? Twenty-eight thousand okay. dollars. It's just crazy. You know what I mean? And again, it's not you guys' fault, but I just I need some help. If not, um, I can't swallow that one. I uh, I thought maybe two, three thousand dollars. Because I hear from somebody, but I never knew it till I see the letter. Okay. Thank you. Thank um, you so much. I'm sorry for taking time. No, that's fine. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mr. Attorney Samarka, do you have any other uh, commentary or no, anything I don't. else to I, add I to ben covered it, it very, covered the process, well. and the board members are familiar with the, the uh, resolution? Okay, so. Um,
Hearing no other public comment at this time, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Staying? Okay. So six zero zero. Okay. Well, the public hearing portion of, of our meetings is, is now officially closed, and we will um, take a minute uh, and regroup for just a moment. I'm not going to shut you know, cameras off or, or mics, but uh, we'll regroup for a moment and, and uh, go into our, uh, our regular meeting. Okay. Thank you. Everyone set with your... Okay. Okay. Very good. Mr. Gervais is joining us. Okay. All right. We're all settled. Oh, very good. Okay. So I'd like to call the uh, Eastland Water and Sewer Commission a meeting of April 25th, regular meeting of 2023, uh, at a 7 o'clock. Uh, we've already said the pledge, so we'll move on to approval of minutes. Um, I move approval of the minutes of March 28, 2023. Okay. Do I have a second? Sure. Oh. Um, okay. And? Roger. Okay. Um, any comments, corrections to the minutes? All set. Okay, so um, all those in favor of approving the regular meeting minutes of March 28, 2023, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? Okay, so 600 <coughs> for that. Okay, uh, next <coughs> on the agenda, item three <coughs> is um, delegations. So, sorry, seven. <laughs> Wait, it's more than one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Oh, one, I was one, a little two, late. Three. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. One, two, three, four, eight. Eight of us. Sorry, I'm so used to six. My apologies. Okay. Same for for uh, clo closing the public hearing as well. Eight. Okay. Uh, delegations. Anyone from the public um, wish to address the board? something that's on this agenda okay right. I don't see any or I guess you can come back up again here okay you just want to grab that go ahead all right seeing none we'll move on to item four which is considering adoption of the proposed supplemental sewer assessments and everyone has this um, supplemental sewer assessment resolution in their packets, and, uh, and you're all familiar with that. So um, before we jump in and make a motion and, and so forth, um, I'd just like to open it up to discussion and comments. Yes, yeah. Stephen. Can we, can we ask questions about the specific assessments? Yes, yes, you can. Okay. Mr. Okay. Moore, sure. Um, well, the first one on the top, the 159 Boston Coast Road, that property was initially assessed at the 7838 yes. file rate. So this 40,783, well, do we take into account any credit for that 7838? Yeah, there was credit of that amount on this assessment. So it would have been, it would have been fine. 40, 48, 48,000 approximately. So basically, they, the town never picked up when originally was the rectory for St. Matthias Church. Yeah, yes, exactly. And the town never picked up on the fact that uh, it was rented out, somebody put a nail saw yeah. on or something in there. Or right, yeah, if, if um, you know, somewhere were to change the use or, or add an apartment or, you know, permit it or not, um, sometimes that probably wouldn't be fun. Yeah. So there's five apartments above? Um, so for 159 Boston Boston yeah. Road, yes. There are five, mm -hmm. five dwellings plus the three base dwellings of the commercial property. Which brings us to eight. Eight, 
Because the, the, the resolution calls for any commercial property uh, to start with a base of three units as, as so, count. Ben, um, hang on. I'd like you to repeat what you just said, but you'll need a microphone. So um, let's make sure we have you on. No, but just for, we're recording. Yeah, for recording purposes, but you won't necessarily. Ben, hear before it. you go there, have you have you sat down with this property owner? Yes. So you you tried you explained all this to him? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so uh, as I stated, um, you know, based on commercial and, and or an industrial assessment, um, part of the calculation uh, requires that uh, we view the land with a certain number of units as a baseline. So even a vacant property that's either in a commercial is three units or if it's in an industrial is five units. And then for every single dwelling that is uh, constructed in that same zone counts as an additional unit charge. So in Patrice's case, three units is the base for a, a commercial assessment, mm -hmm. plus any dwellings that were additionally built. So since there were five dwellings built, that counts towards five units, plus the three that are the baseline to make eight. And uh, Mr. Adabo's case is, is in the same scenario. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. In that case, um, that's the industrial park road. Yes. It was subdivided. There was. 26 and now it is 26 28 correct and and there there actually was a, a lateral that was already provided so For that 26. was a cost that you did not have to bear at the time of construction so 26 had two laterals are, yes is, is there a building on both or just on 28 oh uh, there is a building on both yes yeah it was originally uh one building on 26 so i don't know if there was something else before but then it was subdivided and another building so was constructed so he referenced like it's like thirty seven thousand. Yeah, that was the original 1990 assessment. And that was on 26? That was on 26 solely, yes. And that's been paid off? And that was paid off, yes. So now you have a whole new property with a whole new assessment? Correct. Okay. Yep. On, on that same question, so you have a whole new property, but it already had a lateral into that piece of property that he has documentation that we agreed was paid for. Uh, we agreed that the, the property at 26 had been paid for, but based on the resolution, lateral or no lateral, uh, subdivision triggers a new assessment. Okay. Now, is that, with our counsel here, is that going to open us, I mean, he's going to sue us. So, <laughs> at some point, do, do you, I mean, do we have a leg to stand on with, you know, in the big scheme of things, if he's got something in writing, the two laterals were put in, and we we had poor record keeping you know let's i mean i'm just sitting here saying if i was sitting in his seat that we didn't send him a bill for seven years and then now i mean i i also yeah. have been prorated the benefit <laughs> for the eight oh, years that was okay. enjoyed during that time right. so mr bond i think you know there is no way i can tell you <laughs> <laughs> i without well, you get I, what, what i can what i can tell you is according to the terms of the resolution according to the terms of the statute what is being done here is in line with both of those now, without knowing the particulars of any of these given situations, I wouldn't even hazard uh, okay. a guess as to how something like that would turn out. But the process that has been gone through is proper. Is, is it in line to pull these out of this um, supplement sewer assessment until or no? Because if we vote on this, then we're accepting the fact that these are the numbers Right. Oh, oh, so, so I think I think what the question um, is. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Do, do you mean do you mean pull these three? Oh, set them aside. Set them table aside. Them until something else gets discussed, or is it once we once we vote on this, this is a done deal, right? That 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 number is considered. And it, it's it's the commission's pleasure to vote or not vote on anything that's before it. All right. Um, I just didn't know if that was an option. As I I, I would just suggest that if there are certain properties here that you're looking to pull out that you would note on the record as to why and what action you would be looking for staff to take uh, because as I say I, I defer to Ben in terms of the math you don't want me to do more than two plus two but in terms of the process that's been gone through everything has been done properly I'm, I'm new to the Commission and so what is the process for the notification how, how did it go seven years without 
being noticed. Yeah, that, as I understand, there were some modifications or some improvements done to the property that, frankly, just didn't come to the attention of the uh, Water and Sewer Department. Yeah, I, I, I don't have anything so better to triggers, add other than that. So the, the, the trigger to it is some kind of... It's typically permit typically a permit, and, and perhaps, you know, I'm only speculating, but, um, well... I'm not going to speculate. I yeah, don't know. No, yeah. I don't know what Just happened. Tell me the process. Yeah, um, the process is the, when they the, the, put the process a in, in when a, when a permit is issued, uh, the the developer, uh, you know, either the homeowner or the builder. Sometimes uh, we don't actually know who we're talking to at the time of who's filling out the permit. Um, usually, it's a developer. Sometimes it's a homeowner. Um, they are they are noticed that an assessment will be levied at that time when they connect okay. and when they have benefited. Okay. The and does it go right on the property record? Um, it once once we once we make this vote and after the twenty. Oh, day, okay. So that I see. yeah, it I hasn't see. been levied yet. That's what we're doing and, tonight. And I see. I'm, I don't want to be a stick in the mud. Sure. But we've been down this road before. We when Brad no, but when Brad was here and we had a couple of other developments, especially the one downtown, that the buildings were there, laterals were in, tore the building down. And then we assessed them. It was, I don't know, quite a bit of money. Sure. And, Norton and we building. agreed back yeah. then that that wasn't going to happen again. And that part of the, well, this was part of it. We had this discussion. I, we could probably look it up. That we were going to inform these people. I don't know, Carol, you remember this. We were going to inform everybody prior to them building the building that this was the number because that there was like three times we've been down this road now here we are again this is lack of communication to our public that now we're standing here we're the bad guys we're gonna be the bad guys all right because the bottom line is, is if I was sitting out there too when I built this building and I did that I'd be pissed I'd be standing here saying the same thing I should know that on the day I get my building permit I should know what my expenses are so I can create a budget and so I can go to the bank and so I can do and that's not in my opinion, what we have going on here isn't fair to the people that are sitting in the audience like this. That's my humble opinion. So, but we went, we've already been down this and we thought, I thought we, we had put it in there that the building permit process was going to have the sewer assessment and all those expenses on the, on the building permit for the property. So. And that is the process that we follow. Okay. Yeah, well, they didn't know, obviously, what the expense was going to be. I can't speak for what happened eight okay. years ago. Okay, no. okay, I'm just... No. Okay. All right, thanks. Uh, Carol, you well, had something? Well, that was the area that I was going into, the communication, because the common thread that I seem to be hearing from each one of these individuals who are concerned about their assessment is the very late point in the process where they became aware of what the amount of the assessment was going to be and I did think that this was something that was to be discussed and understood at an earlier much earlier point in the process and I thought the building permit was the building permit process was the timing but and, and since I have taken over that is the process that we follow I, again I cannot speak for what happened in the past so I can tell you that's how we do it now. So are these perhaps building permits then that were pulled before we updated the process? Well, obviously. That that I, I know in, in Mr. Adabo's case that was back in 2015, uh, so I don't yeah. know what, yeah, what, the sure what the commission had decided, but um, I know that there there were some issues with building permits being issued for 28. It appears that he has everything now, um, but other, other than that, I cannot tell you exactly why this played out the way it is. Uh, I'm here before you to try to rectify a situation that I found deficient in, and um, I would also say that, you know, especially in the case of 28, they already have enjoyed a connection for eight years, and. Um, that that is something that no other property, to my knowledge, has enjoyed. I can't. No, sorry. Just a question: Is twenty-eight being charged uh, sewer uh, 
Is he getting a sewer bill? Yes. Is he just getting one? So for eight years, he's been paying for a sewer. Correct. Based on the percentage of the water. None of the properties. Uh, he's, have, sorry, what? None of the properties have a sewer benefit assessment levied to them. That's what this is for. Uh, none of these properties yet have a sewer assessment, correct, yes. Uh, the typical process is that once the assessment is, uh, you know, once a CO is issued or, or once a benefit is enjoyed, then the property is levied. But it doesn't even specifically require a CO. And the dollars are based on a calculation? Dollars are based on a calculation from 1990 okay. and brought to CPI standards. Is, is the five percent an accurate interest rate if it were to have been in place seven years ago, or should it be lower? Uh, the five percent was based on on current market conditions. So we could consider lowering that. Yes. For like for number twenty eight, I don't know how old these other ones. Yes, are. I, I I know in the past the the commission has has looked at at both the the term and the interest rates. I'd be in favor of. Um, Taking these three properties out for later, so we can get a better, maybe adjust the rates as such. And I don't know if there's any other issues. Any other comment on that? No. How That's do we do that? That suggestion, okay, uh, Stephen's suggestion. Well, I, I think we can <clears throat> go forward with the supplemental assessments, um, with the exception of mm -hmm. those three properties. Yep. Yeah, I would, I would say so. Yeah, and I, I think that would give us also <clears throat> the opportunity to take a look at some of the documentation that we got this evening, for which there is one copy and we're getting it at the moment of. So I think it would be very important to um, connect some dots and <clears throat> when permits were taken out, what happened then, what was the communication, uh, as, you, as um, David and, um, and the rest of you have, uh, have discussed, um, Carol. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's a, a, um, that's a possibility. Go ahead. If, if, if I can make a suggestion, yes. um, it, it appears that there's at least three properties that the commission wants a little, uh, a little more Some time. clarification on. And clarification. Um, we might want to, we're, un, we're under no time constraints here. And rather than do it piecemeal, perhaps it might be better to just uh, carry this over to the next meeting for the entirety of Schedule A rather than, rather than do it piecemeal so we have two separate resolutions. Okay, so, so you, you it, would be in favor it's, of it's, one, it's merely, one resolution. Uh, yeah, when, it's, it's merely a suggestion. Point. Yeah, so, okay, so it, yeah. it's... I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a motion that we carry this over till next month's meeting so we can do a little more review mm -hmm. and then we'll put it on the agenda to discuss it prior to vote nine. Second. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's a motion on the floor and it's been seconded. Um, all those in favor? Uh, 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, so we didn't officially have to have to vote to table, but in this case we just want some clarity that, that that's what's happening. Um, and this will give us an opportunity to um, to get any documentation and I I would hope too that um, uh, if, if any of the other um, uh, persons, uh, the other two properties affected, not just Mr. Adalo, but if you have documentation that you would want uh, Mr. North to see and the commission to see, be sure to, you know, expedite that. Okay. All right, so that's where we're at. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, and just to make sure, uh, our recording secretary will take that bundle of documentation for now. Ben's got it? Okay. At, by close of meeting, as long as, as Karen has that, to make sure that it gets in. So oh, I'm sorry. It, the just to make sure that Karen has that documentation that Mr. Adabo gave. Okay. You have it. Okay. Very good. Okay. So uh, we will see you at the next meeting, presumably. Okay. Thank you. Continued until then. Okay. Thanks. All right. Um, okay. Uh, item five on the agenda is correspondence log. There were <coughs> there was a couple of items there. Uh, any comment? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, any comments or on 
that. Okay, so we can move on from that. We don't need to approve that. We just okay. Any um, there were no uh, billing adjustments or disputes that I saw in my packet. That's correct. Okay, no approval of bills this evening. Okay, so we'll move down to item eight, which is um, Mr. Gervais, the finance director's report. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so as many of you know, um, it's a busy time of year for me, having the town budget. Um, so I don't have a full report. Um, I'll send all the board members something. Um, but right now I'll just run over some numbers that I calculated um, this afternoon. On the revenue side for sewer department, uh, we have a budget of $2,479,498. So far we've collected $1,475,654 for a total of 59.5%. Uh, that sounds a little low, but that's because in May is, you know, large collections. Um, on the water side, um, the budget is, for revenues, $4,113,081. So far we've collected $2.17 million uh, for a total of 52.75%. Uh, uh, and again, the collections, um, we've only collected really half of the, you know, the big, um, you know, metered water service. The other half will come in May. So we'll see where we are, um, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of next meeting. Just real quick. Um, yep. the, the revenues, I was given the revenues, and they hit what I projected, so we should be getting the numbers that I yep. was given. They haven't gone out, those going out this week, but I was given the number, and I was within, like, 20, yeah. Yeah. Very good. 20 grand. Yeah, 20 grand out on three months. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> um, on the expenditures side, uh, the sewer department, um, so far to date, uh, and this is as of today, ran it as of today, we've spent $1,562,800. Um, we have 552000 in encumbrances, which is purchase orders. So um, it looks like we've, you know, between the encumbrances and the expenses, it's 85%. If we look at just the expenses, we're at 63%. So we're 42 weeks into the year. So really, I'm looking for things over 81%. That's where we should be right now. So we're 85. That's if we, you know, all the encumbrances came in today. I'm sure there's some, you know, blanket purchase orders and things like that. So on the sewer side, that budget <coughs> looks like, you know, it's it's trending in the, it's trending in, um, you know, we're going to be fine there. On the water side, um, the water side. Uh, the budget there is $4.3 million. So far we've spent $3.1 million, 233000 encumbered. Expenses, we've spent 72%. You heard me just say 81% is the number, so we're, we're trending in the you know, right direction there. Um, add, in the ex add in the encumbrances that we have, we're at 77% expended. So we're 4% under budget there. Um, so I know some costs are, are up a little bit. And there's also contingency there, too. You know, I, I get that. But, um, but overall, you know, I'm looking at the, the bottom line. We're 4% under budget for the year. You know, things could change. You have one, you know, large software expense, things like that. But, you know, um, they're not in the 90%. So we're in 77% one line. So that kind of gave me a little, um, a little comfort there. So... Um, that's all I have tonight. Um, Being new to the game, yep. just a couple questions. So, how, if, do you track graphically? I mean, I'm a visual guy. I mean, could we see when you give us some presentations? Could we see like so, last year's and this year's <laughs> and so? Um, so Karen knows she's also my board of finance uh, okay. secretary. So. That's fabulous. Yeah, uh, it's just um, I yeah, right. limited resources this yeah. time of year. I had my okay. public yeah. hearing last night, right. so um, okay. but usually I, I, I have a PowerPoint um, yeah. when, when I have you know available resources, and cool. I'll have a couple more uh, reports to give you. Great. So um, hopefully, and I saw weeks. some reports last month, and it was a big packet, and that's yeah. where I'm a really visual guy. Yeah. So hopefully, the PowerPoint has some graphs. I'll read the board of finance minutes. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll throw some graphs in for you. Yeah. I'll throw some graphs in for you okay. next uh, next meeting. Thank you. Okay. So, any have any questions? I have a question. When do we start billing quarterly? Thank you. Pass that one. Yeah, I'd like to finish the meter replacement sure. project, but. Um, yeah. um, when, when do you think that might happen? Next year? Yeah. Next year? Yeah, I would say definitely next year. Okay. At so. the earliest. 
So we have this read now, and then we have the read in the fall. The read in the fall, as far, and we're going to check in with the commission, is probably the last one that we're going to start. Um, we might look to the commission to start assessing the meter reading fee after the read in the fall. Right now we're at 70 Two percent. I mean, we've we've yeah, done. We're, good, yeah. we're at like almost five fifty two hundred meters now. So by the time we get to November, we're going to be we're going to start chasing people. So the only way to chase them is we on the on the rates that we that you guys approved. It's a fifty dollar metering if we, if we go to quarterly, that's two hundred dollars a year that someone is going to have to pay us to that they're not getting on the system. So that is a huge incentive for them to get on the system. So that's where we're going to be. We, yeah, we're at seventy-three percent right now, okay. which is an amazing job for everyone knowing where we were with all the stuff with the state and having the contractor and to do it in-house with East Lime, pretty much East Lime workers. I mean, people that live in town that have put in forty-nine hundred meters so far. It's pretty impressive. So um, next year. Thanks. Okay. Um. Any uh, other questions for uh, finance director? Okay, well, that's great. So we look forward to um, your usual um, presentation next month, and and you'll embed all of this information into that anyway. So that'll be that'll be great, Kevin. Thank you. All right, uh, we are on item number nine, um, considering adoption of the water operating budget for FY 2024. So. I think we, you have that in your packets from the, Joe Bergaw. The so. key thing to know is that I thought we did a deep dive as much as we could from everyone being tired at last meeting at the time we talked about it, but I did try to spend some time. Uh, it was the first year of all the years I've been doing this that I broke down and kind of a breakdown that, like we do on the town side uh, that um, Ann knows about, that we have explanations of every budget line item, right. which <coughs> brought up some questions and some of that. So nothing has changed in that. Every number is the exact same. Um, so I didn't put as much stuff in this time. Um, the the budget um, still stands. So we're discussing the water at this point. Right, which is this. By the way, it's this. It's probably the second attachment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. One thing. One thing mm -hmm. I will discuss with you that we didn't get too much into, but it's on a later um, agenda item. Here is that you're going to be hearing in a later agenda item a bond request that Ms., uh, that Ben North brings up. That's already factored into here, so okay. I'm very comfortable that the numbers that he talks about in the uh, amortization schedules that we talk, we're going to be talking about are covered in this budget. Um, and as, so what we're looking to approve, and we, as everyone's aware, we have to approve the budget tonight, or we should need to approve it at the April meeting because it has to be by charter um, mm -hmm. presented at the town meeting, which is the first week of May. Right. So. That's you know, on the water side, we're proposing, what is it, a 5%? Yes. 5% um, budget increase. We're not discussing, per se, a rate increase here, but I did say the last time that, unfortunately, with the 5%, we could be in the 8 to 10 range on the rates. It all depends on where our revenues are coming in. And I explained that last time, and if you need me to go over the any, I can, but... Right now we're proposing the budget, but the rates are what we have to deal with in the fall to, to make up the revenue side of this, this. of this package. Okay. Carol, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I just, um, before we get into a discussion <coughs> specifically about the, the water budget, I wondered if we should reverse, if we should actually have the discussion about the bond request so that when we get into the discussion on the budget and what you put in the budget for, for that item that it will all make sense. But that, that I know that would be helpful to me. I don't know. I'm sorry, say again. If we had the discussion about what's item number 11 on the agenda. Right, which is the bond issue. The bond issue before, in other words, that we should have that information or have that discussion so that we have that or maybe incorporate it. Maybe yeah, I'd rather just see maybe uh, incorporating, incorporating it. To do that. You, you would, so, are we in? Okay, there's, okay, there's a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to move item 11 up to discuss prior to. Um, so switch 11 and 10. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do I have a second on that? I'll second. <laughs> okay. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So 
zero. Right. Okay, so we'll go down to number 11, which is the discussion of possible action on water department bond for various capital improvements. So let's pull out that document. And that was uh, Ben North. That was your memo. Yep. Okay. So uh, fire yeah. away. So uh, you know, on the page after the, uh, the, uh, the description of, of this, um, you know, we have uh, a, a bonding estimate for the immediate needs of the water department in the next couple of years, and then a five-year total estimated cost of the projects that we have before us that we know need to get completed in the next five years or so. Um, uh, the first, the first item is really something that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. This is uh, uh, the well two way to Bridebrook Water Treatment Plant transmission made upgrade. Um, this, this has costs in terms of the the water main that we already approved um, to take money out of sewer assessment for, uh, which is about five hundred thousand dollars. That was going to cover at least the the material that was going to be needed for the the water main construction project. Uh, so we're looking to recoup the costs as as we promised uh, with uh, looking for bonding uh, to cover the, the costs and payback sewer assessment. Uh, right now we have not actually dispersed any funds out of the, out of the sewer assessment for this. Uh, so we do not anticipate there will be much if any interest that we owe sewer assessment based on that money. Uh, but we want to get this lined up so that, uh, that that funding is available to be paid. Uh, next, we have the uh, the well I'll, four. You know, ben, uh, I'll stop you there. Any any as we go along, maybe per item, if any questions, just <coughs> go in there. So, any any questions on that particular item? Okay, go ahead. Next, we have the uh, well four water treatment plant upgrades. Um, this was actually uh, this hundred fifty thousand was planned to be paid out of the uh, current capital budget uh, for uh, fiscal year twenty twenty four. Um, as Joe had mentioned, there was a $200,000 uh, line item for capital work. Um, this was something that I had to push off this year and couldn't complete uh, due to a lack of funding, so I, I need to complete this next year. Um, this, is, uh, this includes uh, controls upgrades. Uh, the controls are 20 years old in this pump state, in this uh, well. Uh, a, a new uh, well pump is needed and the uh, the well needs to be redeveloped to a tune of about 40,000 just for the redevelopment. Um, so this is a <coughs> budgetary number that I think will we'll come in and be able to comfortably uh, take on, but uh, well four it's not seen any attention, any major attention since it was constructed in the mid 90s. Uh, that is also due for um, for filter work and um, and some painting. Uh, so there's some building maintenance that is in that budget as well. Uh, again, you know, I, I should note again that the 2023 bonding that we're requesting is for immediate needs, not for these projected things like painting and building maintenance. Um, well, do you have any questions? How do you calculate the bonded amount versus the amount at the bottom that, that we cover out of the expenses? I guess I just don't understand. So, so all, all of this needs to be bonded. The, the water department has no capital account. Okay, this is what you were talking about last meeting. There's no... Yep. Yeah, yeah there, there, we have never booked depreciation. We have <coughs> never uh, earmarked any money for capital. There's $3.8 million in the sewer assessment that we can draw from. There's nothing in water. We have no backup. Okay. <laughs> so when uh, Ben and, and Matt come to us and say, I have a $400,000 project, if it's not an operating, it's not going to happen. These projects, thats we haven't had a chance to build that capital, and that's what I started trying to do in this budget is to try to build a capital fund. <coughs> capital we, we did have a, we did, for the people that have known the commission a long time, they did have a bond of like $6 million. It was over 10 years ago. It was before my time here, and um, we're out of that money. We've been drawing on that money, or Brad was drawing on that money for years, mm. and when Kevin Gervais got aboard, there was no money left in that account. So... <laughs> The well is dry, and now we have to rebond to do capital projects. Mm -hmm. If we try to drop two million dollars on a four million dollar budget, it would blow up. So the only way we can do it is to bond it. Thank you for that explanation. Okay. Okay. Moving on to uh, well five, uh, we we put in a bunch of work in well five, and and uh, we we're fortunate that the town awarded us uh, nine hundred and thirty thousand dollars in ARPA money for the improvements at well five. Mm -hmm. About half of that was used for the redevelopment of the well. 
uh, and the other half was used for uh, filter upgrades. Uh, we found some um, holes in the filters that need to be welded. Um, we we need to re uh, replace the entire underdrain system in the filters, and uh, we also needed to reline the insides and outsides of the filters and piping. Um, so that money uh, was was well spent. Uh, it also included a new generator. Um, this is kind of a, a good problem to have and a, and a bad problem to have. Now that we have high levels of production at Well 5, uh, we also have higher levels of iron. Um, and this is requiring us to backwash the filters there two to three times a day. And uh, you know, typically, uh, we see a treatment plant of this size usually backwashing once every other day. So we're talking six times what the normal backwashing rate would be for a facility of this size. Um, so right now, um, I'd like to put $400,000 of that bond towards a, a second lagoon at Well 5. Um, there's pr plenty of area for a lagoon to be supported, and it is outside of the sewer connection area, so I don't think it would be feasible to bring this to sewer. Uh, plus, we, quite frankly, we don't want to uh, tax the sewer system with this amount of backwash water, which uh, we're already at a tax rate as it is. Uh, so. That $400,000 is a budget number to construct the secondary lagoon at Well 5 to allow us to keep up with production needs. Just a comment. Go ahead. Oh, um, so would I be correct in understanding that the first three items that we just discussed, the, uh, the Well 2A transmission work, the Well 4 treatment plant upgrades, and the Well 5 improvement to the lagoon, that these are three items that would also um, greatly help improve water quality? Uh, yes, uh, it, at least um, the first project, um, as, as you're aware, we still have a, a well that produces manganese that, it, that at the rates, uh, you know, even at a throttle rate still produces manganese in excess of the, uh, the secondary MCL for manganese that the state of Connecticut has established. Uh, so this is a continuation of the, you know, like the similar project to well 1A and 6 where, where 1A also had iron and manganese issues and was brought to well 6 for treatment. Mm -hmm. um, the other two are, are more resiliency focused, um, but um, something that I want to, uh, you know, I guess is now is a good time to get into it is that um, uh, I, I'm seeing increasing pressure from the Connecticut Deep on the, the current withdrawal permits for Well 3 that we're currently in renewal at. Um, we have a meeting with them next week, and uh, what they are considering is requiring us to shut off Wells 2A, 3A, and 3B during stream flow restrictions, which would leave us with only two wells that can be in production in town when we're in stream flow restrictions. So at this point, I am trying to make sure that we have enough resiliency and redundancy for the existing systems that we have in case uh, a scenario like that occurs. Um, I, I don't have much yet on this. You know, obviously we haven't talked yet, um, but this is something that, that we're watching very closely. Um, we've asked Kevin and uh, uh, to come out and uh, also our consultant and also uh, DPH uh, to be involved with this discussion because, uh, you know, this, this is similar. I, I don't know of how many commission members uh, uh, remember the, the Wayne Frazier days when the uh, the wells were going to be shut off and the state was going to be disconnected, but we're, we're back to that same scenario again with the deep. Um, they decided that since we have an interconnect that uh, we should take all the water we can from New London and uh, we won't have wells of our own. So, so that's what's playing into a lot of this funding as well, is that I know that these facilities need upgrades, they need maintenance to meet their full production capacities and meet their diversion uh, permits that they are registered to take. I need to try to maximize their ability to do that. So, um, will the are these wells that will or will not? I'm not sure I understood. Will, oh, well, will not be impacted by the potential restrictions from DEE. Well, two could very well possibly be impacted by this, um, but that is independent of the health concerns for manganese that well two produces. Right, but wells four and the new well five would not be impacted by well well five already is under a stream flow restriction criteria uh during the summer months 
and that typically is already shut off during the months of uh, part of July and most of August and most of September. But during the, the ability that it has to produce 780,000 gallons a day, I need to try to make sure that it can run 24-7 when stream flow does permit it to. Will that help reduce our overall request for water from New London? In other words, <coughs> if we maximize what we can get out of the well when we don't have the DE yeah. restrictions so that when we do, you know, yeah, so, so certain, certainly, uh, you know, it depends on how this plays out, um, but if, if our current permits uh, continue on in existence, it will certainly help the amount of water that we need to take from New London. Um, but, uh, you know, this, this will probably end up being a system where we need to bank even more water to send to New London because this will also be shut off at a time when we need it most. Uh, I, I mean, I would just, just follow up with saying that this will be the last well that has iron and manganese that we're producing in the system um, so that you know, we, we will eliminate all of those iron and manganese uh, contaminants that are in the system at that point and, uh, and perhaps it's more palpable to other communities. Do, do any of these wells have sodium risks going on? Uh, Two-way, four, five? Uh, well, well uh, the, none, none of the wells have sodium levels that is any higher than 40 milligram per liter, to my knowledge. Um, five is the lowest at about 12. Um, four is, is in the mid-30s, um, the, the one that's right over here. Um, and uh, wells two and three generally are, are in the mid-20s. Okay. Okay, continue on. Um, so, uh, you know, we have 12 booster pump stations. Uh, seven of them currently right now have hydropneumatic tanks. Um, some of them are, are 30 to 40 years old. Uh, we've had dis deactivated Sunrise Trail a couple years ago, um, and we have already converted a couple of these stations to VFD control, uh, but there are several other stations that also need attention uh, that need to have controls upgrades done and uh, we would like to eventually phase out hydropneumatic tanks in some of the older systems. Um, you, most of them are smaller systems anyway, um, so I, I think we could probably do at least two with the current $100,000 allotment for BFD conversion and uh, deactivating those hydropneumatic tanks. Um, this was something that um, I believe Carol is familiar with from Southeast Connecticut Water Authority where they had a pump station explode from a hydropneumatic tank mm -hmm. that took out the entire building. So that's something I would not like to see happen here and I would like to be proactive in removing those. Uh, so working towards that as well. Um, and then a couple, a couple things on the bottom. Um, you know, we, we, this is more of a wish list thing. You know, we're not putting any money towards it right now, but ultimately I would like to go to an automatic leak detection system uh, where and some, Montville has actually done this, where, where there are caps on the fire hydrants uh, that, that look at pressures in the system and, and uh, listen in on, on the system itself and try to pinpoint where leaks are coming from. Um, mm -hmm. Since water conservation is such a, a critical uh, topic for us and a critical uh, uh, endeavor for us, uh, you know, I, th I think in the next five years or so we, we should really uh, look at um, spending some money on a leak detection system that helps us conserve water. And then finally, um, some of the things I had mentioned before, I uh, want to put $100,000 towards uh, the possibility that we could increase the production capabilities at well six, uh, which has has traditionally, uh, and even during the, the aquifer studies that were done there, shown to be in a confining layer between that and uh, Gorton Pond. Uh, but again, this was something that the DEP wanted to see reduced dramatically. Um, at the time that this well was built, it had the production capability of over a million gallons a day, uh, but has been reduced by the DEP permit to just 440,000 gallons a day. So if there's a possibility to make up some water in the existing wells, I think well six is a great candidate for that. Um, in addition to that, uh, I think that we're going to see a desire at the state level to do more stream flow studying at well three to justify the permit. 
Uh, so I'm preparing for that. And um, I think eventually we need to start looking for another supply of water at um, Plants Dam. Um, that's that's uh, town-owned land, and it's it's in an aquifer that's by itself. It's part of the Four Mile River Aquifer, um, and that's the last known remaining source of stratified drift in town that could support a well for us. Uh, so that's also something that that I would like to try to do more studying on in the near future. I just made Joe Mingle happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's looked at that for a long time, right? Yeah, he's yeah. Just, that's how we've been at the Pardon? He's yep. the same, too. Yes. <laughs> Should we put his name so, on it somewhere? <laughs> not, not to be dreary, but we have we have a lot of things that we could be we, we need to look at very seriously in a short amount of time. I think that this this is a great way to, um, as Joe had mentioned, to to stabilize the budget so that we're not constantly trying to draw large capital amounts out of out of an operating budget, which is difficult for any utility to do. Uh, we need some stabilization uh, to the budget where we can put this bond into a package that, that is something that we can bear uh, while we, we do these things that need to be done. In order to get discussion on this item so we can go into item nine, mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve and request a bond of $4 million in funding to be secured and an account created for the water department capital needs for various mm -hmm. capital improvements projects in reference to the water department capital projects list dated April 2023. Second. Mm -hmm. we have a motion and a second. Um, yeah. Discussion? Yes. Go well, ahead. I just, Ben did a great job of describing them, but it's like, how do we pay for it? And I just want to yes. identify where it is now that you say, because Carol's ready to say it. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I okay. beat her to the punch. You can read my mind, Joe. This okay. is scary. In, in, line, in line two of the water budget, it says in the comments, um, the problem with our debt um, payments is they were bouncing all over the place and it was creating debt spikes. So this current year in, in the second, the third column, it's 765,127 is our principal payments mm -hmm. this year. Um, next year, I'm budgeting 679, but in the comments, we actually only have a debt <coughs> payment of 564 because I was trying to balance the debt by putting in more to put it in a reserve, and then I found about this, so it's actually covered. So Kevin um, Gervais did a debt amortization at, based on what percentage? Four, four and a half percent? Over 20 years, and it turned out to be 151,000 a year. So we had to come up with 151,000. It's actually, um, this won't go until August or September, right? Um, the first payment. So the first year's payment will be about $120,000. So it would, be, it would still be covered in this line any, if it was 130, it could be, um, the rest of the that payment could come out of that 200,000 capital project line. So it's in this budget already to cover it. Mm -hmm. And it's essential to stuff that's needed to be done. And these guys are doing a great job of banging out these projects that are absolutely well needed. So I would highly recommend, because they keep telling me, and I'm kind of the money thing to say to feed it, is this is essential to keep this system going up. And we have it in the budget proposed for you mm -hmm. um, to pay for it. Just want want to add to that the well two A to three project was originally slated to be a DWSRF ten million dollar project. Um, obviously, we're reducing some scope here, but we're also doing a lot of the work in house, um, and, and that's allowing us to reduce the cost to what we're asking for tonight. Um, Kevin, do you have any um, any comment? <clears throat> Boy, Joe and Ben did such a good job uh, explaining uh, on, all that. On the financials? <laughs> um, on the financials, yeah. Um, we met uh, last week, I believe it was. Last week with the, the first select men, went over the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, I ran some scenarios with some amortization schedules, and um, I don't have them in front of me, but um, 150, 153, something like that, 151,000 no, for a full year. And, mm -hmm. you know, there'll be a couple months not paid, so I think the, the numbers in the budget will more than cover that. So instead of this two hundred thousand dollar line item, we'll replace that with the the budget item for the, the loan debt service. For the debt service. Yeah, the number up top doesn't cover it. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions, comments? Okay. There's a motion on the floor and it's been seconded. Um, 
All those, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's? No one's abstained, so it's eight zero zero. Okay. Right. We'll return to item nine, the adoption of the water operating budget. So now that we've explained that um, how the budget, uh, how the the bond goes, and it's in the covered in the bond principle in the capital projects, I, I, unless you guys have, I mean, there's significant, if you notice, is a 52% increase in the chemical line. We're just dealing with, that's it's our biggest hit. Mm -hmm. um, the world exploded. I think a lot of our chemicals come out of the eastern, eastern um, Ukraine and all that, of course. So um, it was a big, big um, mm -hmm. reason of it. So the biggest of a $205,000 Increase in this budget, 154,000 is under chemicals. So 75% of the increase is on one line that we have to put in the water. So um, everything else, I think we've done as best we can. To um, uh, at, at the other thing that you can see at this is that the meter installer line, it's about two thirds of the way down. It went down 100,000. This is showing the winding down of the meter project because we're at 73% is the people that are doing that at some point are temporary workers. So we're going to um, not be continuing that in completely through this fiscal year. So um, we were able to do some savings. And we, we're actually not using as many installers as we had a budget. They're just doing a great job banging it out. We don't need five people doing it. We have, we have two temporary and a third um, full time of, of for, for all. And one uh, approval of the uh, proposed water department budget fiscal year 23-24 as presented by staff. Mm -hmm. I have a motion. Do I have second. a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, wait. Yep. Oh, discussion. Yeah. It's still uh, in discussion. I, so I, we'll I brought this off. up at the last meeting, and um, I have some more comments I want to make about this, but um, the line item um, regarding salaries where it um, talks about the um, public works director and finance director and utility engineer. What you don't say in that summary sheet, but that line also now includes um, some support towards the um, salary for the first selectman. That's that correct. That's still in there? We're carrying $8,300. $8,300. It doesn't, it doesn't say that, but as you can see in that item, um, there was a change where 35% of the um, assistant utility engineer was going to be picked up now by sewer, which previously that was 100% water, that position, correct? That's, that's correct. But, so, but even though that 35% is a savings on the water side because 35, mm -hmm. but um, we're still going up nineteen hundred dollars in that line item and the reason for that is because of picking up the eighty three hundred for the first selectman towards first selectman's salary and um it, it, you may recall at the at the last meeting there was some discussion between myself and and, and kevin on this and he was pointing out that he was spending more time relevant to things water um, and um, I, I'm not sure, you know, what triggered unusual things in terms of water. I mean, we had the um, ARP monies for things, and uh, I think there have been concerns by the public in terms of water quality. Uh, and I don't know if he was. I, I don't know what the issues were that suddenly triggered a lot of his time being spent. But I feel that it's part of the first selectman's hat, and when. When the first selectman is responding to a citizen with a concern, it's 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 as the head of the town. It's not as part of providing a service to water. Uh, or, or it, it, um, and Kevin pointed out, and I, I gave it a lot of thought because he pointed out, well, we pay a percentage of the public works director salary, we pay a percentage of the finance director salary, but. You're providing a service, Joe, to the to water. I mean, the the kind of budget information and preparation. I mean, we we've had 
It's been amazing. I mean, it, it's really, and you're, you know, you're doing administrative oversight. You, it's a direct service to water and sewer. Um, the history with the finance director position actually goes back to when we were doing the interconnect project. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the finance director was spending lots of time on things water. And I was like, oh, you know, and that made sense. And then when that project got completed, and um, you remember, Joe, I mean, we had discussions about this, but um, we continued paying percentage of the finance, but it's supporting the finance director office because of staff support for payroll for water and sewer employees. So again, it's a service. But the first selectman, that's an elected position as the head of the town. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a different Except that, if and I may say, um, the first selectman is the CEO of of the town. Of and, the town, right. exactly. And our so and he's chair, chair of water and sewer, water and, sewer and and, and um, they spend they spends ten percent of their time. Right. We have all these meetings that they're talking on water and sewer issues, but water is a separate budget, so um, we don't charge the HR director in this budget. There's plenty of HR stuff. Is so the, the water and sewer gets a lot of benefit from the town. Mm -hmm. it's, but so yeah. I, 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 it's, it's up the, to the thing. But the, the, I mean, um, the first slide does spend a lot of time on water and sewer issues yeah. and water and sewer. But it's primarily with his first selectman hat. I mean, the, he he is not, or, you know, he. Or, it, but he's engaged good. in the resolution of issues and disputes. So I. I sort of fail to see your, um, you know, your your point entirely because uh, when there's an issue and he gets a phone call, or if there's a matter that um, uh, Ben North, uh, you know, can't resolve, it might he might be engaged, and he's certainly engaged here. So, uh, you know, I I see that definitely there is. Um, the possibility that a portion of his salary, of, of a first selectman salary, could be paid by, um, you know, by the water and sewer department. You know, I, I, we're, we're, how shall I say, we're getting into territory where it's, I mean, it's by ordinance in terms of the role of the first selectman, in terms of uh, um, being the chair. It, it's, and what Kevin said, he would like to see that changed and maybe and that this should continue until such time as there's a change. But that's not in our control so, as, as yeah. water and sewer. That is, I, I don't know all the ins and outs, but right. historically that's, that's, that's an right. ordinance. And, and generally, and, and every first selectman has struggled with this, that when, when you go into this role, it's hard to be a neutral and like a lot of times the needs of the town and the needs of, of water and sewer are, are the same. But sometimes it's a conflict of interest, you know, in terms of your first selectman hat and, 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 and it's... Um, so let me just say this. I think that the, um, the pulling out of a portion of the first selectman's uh, salary and assigning it to, um, to water and sewer department, I think is done more because he is CEO of the various departments and so um and it's uh it's just a logical place that where he is spending time independent of sitting here as as first as uh chair of this commission he's spending time in his office and working with the related departments uh, and and uh, water and sewer department so I, i'm not even looking at the issue of him as chair i'm looking at him as CEO, this is part of his job, so I I don't have a uh, I don't have a I, problem I, I, with it. I only speak of chair because that was something Kevin himself brought up at the last. Right, meeting I think I think there's chair. a little conflation of yeah. issues. I mean, you know, I'm gonna. This is the way because I asked Kevin the I asked him mm -hmm. the question because I kind of had a little bit of the. But if you digest it this way, we are a separate <laughs> entity. Yes, we so. are, we we are not encumbered by a lot of the town's rules. We have ratepayers, okay? Mm -hmm. Our ratepayers support this and bonding, mm -hmm. taxes. So Kevin, as the first selectman now, mm -hmm. right, gets elected. He's supposed to run the town. 
we are we are basically a separate business this is where like you and i disagree on the separate we're a business we're a separate business he spending the town's time right in the town salary whatever the salary is working for on our issues that we get paid for right so that's the the mentality behind it is that any hours and time that he spends he should give us a ticket he should say hey i spent four hours on that at 150 dollars an hour just like the lawyer does the lawyer just left because un, 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 you know and that doesn't yeah but that doesn't make it but for us too and then another thing too is that we're splitting hairs we've argued about the fire hydrant fees and all do you know how much money it would cost this water and sewer commission if we had to rent this space if we had to rent all the rooms we had to and that that's where i mean we're going we're going to go down the rabbit hole if we start saying hey we're we're not going to pay for this and we're not going to i mean that's the way i look at it it's we're, we're a separate business because we're our own entity and we have rate payers nobody else has rate payers other than the taxpayers i, I, I mean that's the way i look at it. I, 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 call I just, the question yeah, call the question okay any other comment any other comment from this end of the Some, table? There's motion, there's okay, motion there's second. a motion. It's been seconded for, and so um, we're voting on the, the water to review. Well, the water Time's yep. passed, the, the water budget. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? Okay, the motion carries 8-0, thanks. Okay. We'll move on to the adoption of the sewer operating budget. Okay, the, the sewer budget, again, hasn't changed at all. The reason why the water budget had an increase of 5%, but I thought that the rate increase was higher, but this one has a 10% uh, budget increase, but I'm proposing a poly of 5 or 6% rate increase, is the introduction of sewer assessment funds into this operating budget, offsetting it. So that's, your, that's, the, that's the disconnect, is on the water side, not, no assessment money is being brought in to help the operating budget in this case, and it's justifiable through certain items in this that we can take money out of our $3.8 million sewer assessment fund. Um, and where I justify that is on the second page, the revenue page in the corner, justifying taking that money. That's why, um, even though it's a 10% um, budget increase, it's not going to be as much of a rate increase that looks like in the fall. And our sewer rates are much higher than our water rates, relatively speaking, so that that um, kind of lends itself better. Do you have any questions on the sewer budget? Is, is, that a, is that fund an accumulation of these assessments that we were... Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We, we, we brought in a lot of sewer assessment funds uh, over with Costco and Gateway, and okay. a, lot, a lot of these have been... That number, you know, and we hold that money in the fund. Yeah, that, the sewer assessment was like three million only about five years ago. It's up to like three point eight because a lot of these big project developers coming in, like the people that own the sound, came in and just paid out the sewer assessment. It was like a half a million dollars they paid it in check. Oh, the sewer God. assessment went from three to three point five million dollars. So, um, but most assessments have been paid off in town, so it's not going to be some linear progression of the three point eight. Oh, okay. But don't forget that the sewer time. assessment money is. Technically, it should be a million dollars higher because sewer owes a half a million and water owes a half a million <laughs> operating to the sewer systems. I move approval of the proposed um, Eastline Sewer Department operating budget for fiscal 23-24. I have a motion to have a second. 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 Okay. Mr. Spencer. Um, any further comment? Just a general question. Um, do we need to be putting anything into the sewer budget in terms of uh, starting to build a fund to, towards being able to purchase capacity? Towards, um, is, is that some planning? I, like we, we've talked about the need um, probably coming up sooner as opposed to later. Um, well, and well, if, well, so, if so. we need to start building a there's, to answer your question, it's up to this commission, but we do have $3.8 million on the side if you had to start looking at capacity and say 500000 was capacity, um, we'd have to find out from an attorney if that was allowable use of it, mm -hmm. but to start putting aside three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 in any one budget would be challenging. 
on the flip side, we do have a line for capital projects that we can capital could could be used for sewer assessment if it needed to be. But um, I think we'd really be killing this budget if we started put two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars to pay for capacity. So I think we have to start having that conversation more of what the cost of capacity is going to be. Roger. And I think if you start assigning it on a budget line, people will look at that as um, that number is the number that we're going to buy mm -hmm. capacity with. And that may not be anywhere near the number, mm -hmm. or it may be too much or too little. Uh, so you don't want to say we're going to put a half a million towards purchase of uh, additional allotment for sewer uh, just because it'll be written in black and white rather than something that was either negotiated or discussed before you actually put a number in the budget. Since we have funds there, we can allocate them at any given time during the course of the year if needed. Technically, we don't need them right now. We're not beyond capacity. Right, I think, yeah. I think that we That's a good point. Need, to, need to explore and come up with a game plan for additional capacity Mm -hmm. And as we start developing that, we're going to know better what kind mm -hmm. of money we're going to need to pay for that capacity going forward. And it's kind of premature to start yeah. uh, banking mm -hmm. until we know some idea of what we're going and what we can get. And you, yeah, and you, and you may need to, um, you know, def you will definitely need to get some uh, opinion from council on the use of your assessment fund and if it can be directed to increasing capacity cost. So for sure, yeah, it all depends uh, among on other, you, among yeah. other things uh, yeah. that we already have in place. There's, what what ways, here can yeah. pay for for increased capacity? Sure. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think too for the capacity issue. I think what we have to do is we have to put it on an agenda item yes. and come up with a an actual or when do we need capacity mm -hmm. when you know what is the projection based on what we have going on what we've approved at what point are we really going to need capacity because you don't want to go searching for capacity that's going to sit idle for years and years and years mm -hmm. and pay for something you're not going to use well we you have to have a plan so that's something yeah. that I think we should yeah. Yeah, I definitely think it's a it's a future agenda item yeah. go ahead well, we also don't know about New London are they going to even give it to us <coughs> or do we have to talk to Waterford yeah. so we we need to start that dialogue first yeah I, I was just going to say that we could certainly make it a future agenda item and maybe the trigger for <coughs> really talking about that more seriously is is to see how this development that we just approved capacity for uh, goes through zoning and, and what they actually receive in terms of what the yeah. build out looks yeah. like but I, I agree we have a few different options that mm -hmm. are on the table New London's one of them the state's mm -hmm. the other one um, we, we and, should be doing that very soon. And, and not, this probably isn't in the right place to say this, but the reason the DEP, and Ben knows it, is going to start messing around with our That's well and our stream flows is Groton spilling a million gallons a day. Everybody's spilling water, mm -hmm. and once we're regionally connected, they're going to be like, hey, use that water mm -hmm. rather than affect the fish. That's, that's coming regionally. We're going to mm -hmm. be forced to do that. So... I mean, Groton's spilling a lot of water right now because Pfizer's isn't producing nothing. Everybody, they have they have two reservoirs that they're pushing water into the river that um, they want it that they really want to regionalize it. Just a quick point: if you know, if it's truly a, an agenda item that you want to get to sooner than later, think of the think of the month that you're think you know that you maybe you want to get through your. Uh, what we just the item that we tabled next month it might be a, a large conversation but it might be a nice time this summer when other things are not you know in your way to to uh, put it on an agenda and come up with us maybe a little subcommittee a little list of the topics you've got to cover so um so yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just want to say I agree with Roger. I don't think there should be a line item that says this and that. Okay. Yeah, it's in a terrible so negotiating so position. <laughs> right. Right. Um, it should be a box. But I, I guess where I'm going, and and I like the way this discussion is going, is that we have to do some planning, mm -hmm. and part of that planning is to think of ways we're going to manage okay. funding a potential purchase down the road. And right now we don't have any contingency. Maybe it's a matter of building our contingency fund or you know, something, looking into if, if, if a purchase would be considered a capital improvement and we might be able to 
or you know, if there are other things that could be paid through the SAF that would free up some other money or something. Um, and even exploring if the town might help with purchase because that also impacts economic development and so on. And you know, there's, there's yeah, I think there's a, a there are a lot of there. a lot of options and possibilities. So maybe a you know a June July uh, time frame for for getting getting this conversation going. Okay, so we're back to our motion. Okay. Yep. Okay, so all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any any opposed? Any abstain? None. So the motion carries eight zero. Okay, we are we have already done item eleven, so um, let's get to item twelve, which is the hang on one second, uh, discussion and possible action on the purchase of sewer manholes. And I believe this was um, Rather straightforward, but Ben, you could fill us in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this one's without contention, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's you know, we're, easy we're, part. Yeah, we're we're doing some uh, road construction uh, 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 with Public Works, and um, there have been uh, manholes identified on on Giant Snake Road that need replacement. Um, we we have a stock right now of uh, ten to twelve, and uh, looking to replenish the stock, so uh, we make sure that we have them. Um, like everything else, these are long lead time items, um, and uh, you know, we'd like to. You know, we have the stock right now, but I would like to have them uh, when these things happen in the future. So, mm -hmm. the stock. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve and request up to fourteen thousand dollars out of funds available in the sewer assessment fund, and create an account titled manhole purchase April twenty twenty three to purchase twelve new manhole frames and covers. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor mm -hmm. signify by saying aye. 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 Um, anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? None. So uh, 800 there. Okay. Now we have project updates. Uh, project updates. Okay. Yep. So uh, 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 Joe had uh, referenced a little bit of the, the meter. The meter works, so it kind of took my thunder there, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, meter requirements are going going well. Um, that's great. I, I will point out that the the numbers have changed a little bit. Um, this is based on some changes in how we look at what was actually in our metering system. Um, Gateway had previously been counted towards the meter count, so uh, you know, we actually took that out because those are sub meters. So you'll see that that number had fluctuated a little bit. Um, but we, and that, that's why it looks like we, we did 333. We actually did about 200 like we had done before um, in, in the previous month. So we're still, still running about 200 meters a month. Um, so I'm still maintaining that we're looking for about 90% completion um, by the time uh, you know, we get ready for the next billing period. So things, things are going really well with that project. That's great. How about the um, Boston Post Road Rehab Project? Boston Post Road looking Rehab much better. Project, yeah, yeah, that that one, uh, that one is looking really good. I'm really, really happy with the way that turned out. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, fortunately, we we haven't had a lot of adverse effects from it. Um, we've actually been flushing at the same time, um, which has been allowed us uh, to keep up with with the the typical work that we do this time of year, as well as having the tank down. Uh, and uh, we anticipate that that tank will be back online within the next uh, two to three weeks. Uh, we're waiting for the uh, cell phone contractor to put all the antenna back onto the tank, um, at, at which point then the uh, painting contractor can do his final punch list of any kind of items that, that might have been missed or damaged when the cell phone contractor put his equipment back. And then we have some acceptance testing and we'll be back online. So really good really good things going on with that project right there. Do we modify the pipe to mix the water? Uh, so that, that system already had a, a modification done uh, 10, 15 years ago, and it, it does have a, a mixing system that's installed inside of it. It has a series of pinch valves that, that uh, allow the system to, to mix properly. Uh, yep. And uh, finally, the uh, Niantic Pump Station project, I haven't really talked about this one too much. Uh, we've obviously been busy with the other projects, um, but that one is, is kicking off. Uh, we have ordered the pumps, we've ordered the VFDs, uh, we have a piping layout that's been completed, 
and uh, we uh, you know, probably next week I'm going to be meeting with um, a couple of different contractors uh, and uh, looking at how we're going to bid out the piping. Um, I'd like to uh, to do that just with a, a specific uh, type of uh, general contractor that specializes in pipe layout. So again, this isn't a type of project that's that's a, a GC type of project. We're going to be uh, GCing it um, and saving costs and getting the product that we want along the way. Have we heard anything on Rocky Neck? Uh, moving of a no uh, no I haven't uh, I, I did uh, I did hear back that um, that they would like uh, to look at the visualization that they looked at about a year ago and they would like to look at it again uh, so that's promising so I sent them that and I'm waiting to hear back okay uh, a couple so. other comments thank you uh, yes glad to see the yellow the yellow bandana has gone off yes. the fire. Yes, we took care. And we took care of the high fire hydrant. Yes. Yep. Uh, secondly, uh, I did get my uh, new meter put in this uh, oh, great. past month. And the Excellent. young man was your permanent man that came out and put it in, and he was very professional, very polite, did a nice job, and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, uh, I thank was you. very happy with uh, with the work he did. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we'll share that with him. And, and actually, that that's a good point that you bring up that. Um, that, that's kind of an ancillary benefit that we've gained with the meter replacement project that we've been able to uh, hire on these people on a temporary basis, uh, try them out, and um, where there have been openings, and there have been openings during their tenure, uh, we've been able to move them into permanent positions. So it's, it's actually been a, a good opportunity to, uh, to work with somebody before they, be, they enter the union and, and we see what they're all about. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ben. Okay, we'll move down to item 14, the chair's report. Um, I'll keep it really simple. There's much going on throughout town, but a uh, big item uh, was the public hearing last night on the, on the uh, FY 23-24 budget. Um, the budget was finalized. Uh, not a whole lot of public comment at last night's meeting. Uh, some other meetings along the way, there, there tended to be some. Um, the the um, annual town meeting will be May 8th, and the referendum is May 18th, where folks can vote from 8 to 8. Um, the, I'll just tell you that the, um, there was a final little tweaking last night because of um, funding being restored. Most, like, we're, we're what, maybe 75% sure of the funding being restored, 80% for the um, educational uh, cost sharing grant. And um, so because of that, uh, the, the mill rate increase that is being proposed is uh, 1.03. Do I have that correct from last night? Um, 1.03 mills. One, right, 1.03 mills. Okay. So the mill rate from 23.84 to 24.87. Okay. Just so uh, again, I you know it was, it's been a long budget season for everyone. So many meetings, but it was a nice, uh, a nice sort of, uh, we're, we're getting to the end. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel on this. Uh, you all might be familiar with the Route 161 corridor study that's underway. This is separate and apart from anything with Exit 74. Um, check out the website. Uh, there is a meeting, uh, the town website, there's a meeting uh, this Thursday from 6 to 7.30 at the middle school where um, there will be a sort of second uh, public input allowed on the project so there, <coughs> I went to the first one this is a great opportunity to see what's going on what's proposed uh, and to get your two cents in so um, I, I recommend that um, budget wise I just want to make one other point um, uh, this year we are um, our new uh, building officer has helped with um, um, adjusting our uh, fees for um, permitting and inspection and that's that's something long overdue so I was happy to see that and that's incorporated into into the budget and also a fire marshal uh, uh, we are now uh, by ordinance instituting a, a payment of fees uh, and you know comparing ourselves to other towns finally getting in line with um, charging for inspections um, so that's a that's a good thing. So there, I think there's some highlights to this budget. Um, 
you know, uh, which should be made, you know, uh, and always uh, Kevin's been great looking for ways to um, <laughs> to save money, looking for added revenue, et cetera, et cetera. So thanks very much for that. So that's all I have. Any questions? Um, yes. Not a question, but I there was a big article in the paper this morning um, that a bill is kind of looking hopeful in the legislature to in terms of the money that towns get from the uh, oh from the contest. casinos yeah, yes the casinos. that right and um, it said that like we're right now I guess um, East Line gets like. 270 or something that that might go up substantially in 2026. So yes. Not anything is going to happen. It won't tomorrow, affect this year, but but luck, but, ha but, but happily that, the following years. Yeah, but that looked uh, very right. helpful. Yeah. Right. Kevin, did you um, you're going to mention that about when it will become if it if it happens when it it, it yeah. begins right? Yeah. So that was that was a nice read. Yes, yeah. that was positive. Make news. the cost go down. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Any money is is welcome. Okay, and we have, um, so moving on to staff updates, uh, the water monthly report. But yeah, I, I would ask if you have any questions. Um, mm -hmm. Fairly typical uh, time of year for us. We're sending water to New London uh, through the interconnect, and um, uh, you know, we've begun flushing and that sort of thing. Uh, so, yeah, status quo for the most part. Okay. Any questions for Ben on either the water monthly report or the sewer department monthly report? Okay, we'll move on to um, agenda item 16, future agenda items. There are two, two items here, homeowner water line leak insurance and the irrigation sub-metering policies. Any comments, thoughts, when this should um, all happen? Just that, um, and we talked about this at the last meeting, that maybe we should be considering a subcommittee on um, potential purchase of capacity, you know, and those kind of issues, like what's available, what would the process be, looking for funding sources, you know, all of those okay. kinds of things that might be a... Okay, so, yeah, that should be definitely added in sooner than later, right? Yep. Because it will well, take that. some time to research and to have discussion. Okay, so I think we're set, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.